Hi you guys, Lindsay here. Well, welcome back to my channel, Inside to Him. All right, you guys, who is ready to move on to some side seams? Um, you should have your armhole openings on the front as well as the back completely done, as well as the front casing and the back casings and your center back seam. That's where we are now. So now we still have two separate pieces and we need to combine them to make one dress, which is what we're going to do by um, sewing up the side seams today. Okay, and I told you in the last video that I was going to teach you guys a method of finishing raw edges that was not covered in the instruction booklet here. Um, there's actually a fifth method known as French seams. So I'm going to show you guys how to do that today. Obviously, if you don't want to make French seams, you certainly don't have to. You can finish the side seams the same exact way that we did the center back. Feel free to just do that again. Um, and while we're here in the beginning, those of you who are making view C all but have to do that. Um, this side seam here for C where the little slit will be, like this is going to be completely open and your leg can stick out very Angelina Jolie. Um, so if you're making view C, I recommend sewing this seam exactly how we did the center back. Even so far as to say that this um, section of the upper back should be sewn like this section of the lower part of C. So this side seam of C is basically an upside down version of the center back seam. So if you're making C, just do that again. If you're making A, B, and D, and you wanna learn a different way to finish your seams, especially on these lightweight drapey fabrics, then try a French seam. Again, I'll say that if you are making um, this out of one of the cotton knits, <clears throat> you really don't have to finish your side seams at all, or any of your seams for that matter. You can just trim them down to a quarter of an inch after you have sewn them. Okay, French seams. So, in the sewing world, Every seam is sewn right sides together, right? That's what we're taught over and over and over again. Right sides together, right sides together. Well, when you're making a French seam, you do wrong sides together. And it's very counterintuitive and very confusing sometimes. And you will, your brain will be wanting to tell you, this is wrong, this is wrong. But with French seams, you do wrong sides together. And I will show you why. So basically what we're doing is we're going to be sewing along the side seam at a three eighths of an inch seam allowance. That's step one. Then let's pretend we have that sewn, okay? Somewhere, well, that's not three eighths, somewhere around here. All right, then you trim this to like a quarter of an inch. You press it open like we have pressed it open here, and then you turn it right sides together and then stitch at a quarter of an inch all along this seam here. So that, in the end, your right sides are together. This is the seam allowance, and on the right side, you have your, now remember this is gonna be trimmed, but you have your um, finished seam on the outside. So that is the nuts and bolts of a French seam. Let me walk you through each step one by one. Okay, so like I said, wrong sides together. It's very weird, but it's right. You need to match up your dots, or your, I'm sorry, your notches. Like we have the little double notch right there, so we wanna match that up and then match up this seam all along, all along this edge. Yeah. Perfect. Now we are going to head to our sewing machine and we are going to sew this side seam at three eighths of an inch. We could also, let's try it another fun way. Why not? 
We could also just take a marking pen, marking marker, marking pen, and mark where three eighths of an inch is too from the raw edge. And then you go to your sewing machine, put this on the edge of the presser foot and then move your needle to match up with the inside of this blue line. So let's try that. Okay, so as I said, I'm going to place all of this underneath my presser foot. I am going to line up the edge of the fabric with the edge of the presser foot and I am going to move my needle over till it's just hitting the inside of that blue line. And then that's gonna be my 3 8 of an inch mark. And then, okay, so we need to backstitch a couple times, like so, and then you just keep sewing, making sure to um, keep your fabric in line with the edge of the presser foot the whole time. Okay, all done with that. So now you've got a seam that looks like this and we need to head over to our iron and uh, press this guy open. Okay, now we have our 3 8 inch seam sewn wrong sides together and I pressed it open. Now we need to take these seam allowances and we need to trim them back. Um, this is probably closer to an eighth of an inch. We, our, our next seam is gonna be a quarter of an inch. So, so long as you are somewhere in between, like just shy of a quarter of an inch, you'll be fine. And none of, the, none of these raw edges will be seen whenever we encase them in our next step. So just trim close to the seam line, but not too close. I know that's vague, um, but somewhere between an eighth of an, of an inch and a quarter of an inch. And I'm using itty bitty, like one inch long scissors. These are the same ones that I used in the last video. They are made by Kai, very sharp, very precise. Um, link in the description box. Okay, all done. You can see that, you know, it's not perfect. It's like a wavy cut line um, and that's okay. Just as long as it's cut shorter than a quarter of an inch, you'll never ever see it again. That's the theory anyways. Okay, so now that we have that all done and trimmed, we're gonna turn this right sides together, okay? Now you have your seam line like this, you need to go back to your iron and press this all out really flat, ensuring that the seam line is on the very edge of the, um, of the seam. And then once you get it pressed nicely, we're gonna go back to the sewing machine and stitch a quarter inch seam here, so. Okay, so we have our pressed side seam. Ignore this circle. This was what I marked um, for those of you that are making view C, so just ignore that part. Um, anyways, so we have our seam pressed where the previous seam line is on the very edge. Now we are going to put this underneath our presser foot and a lot of presser feet or a lot of uh, machines have a little mark for where a quarter of an inch is. So we don't have to do all that measuring rigmarole. We can just put our needle all the way to the left and put our presser foot down with the edge of the fabric at that quarter inch mark. And then backstitch and sew that whole seam. Just making sure to keep that previous seam line evenly along the edge.
right, I backstitched a couple times there at the end, and now we have our beautiful quarter inch seam. So we're gonna go back to the iron and we are gonna press this seam to the back. So all of this is gonna get pressed to the back and you'll see, I'll show you again at the table, how it creates this beautiful seam on the outside and fully encased on the inside. All right, so our French seam is completely done. Doesn't it make such a beautiful seam on the inside? Here it is in comparison to that other method that we used on the center back seam. Um, it's just nice because it's all wrong sides of fabric. So it just, there's just a very smooth transition. You can almost barely tell there's a seam there at all, which is really nice and really beautiful. And then on the right side, this is what it looks like here. Like you can't even tell that, you know, there's anything different going on than the center back seam. It just looks like a beautiful seam. Now we need to do all of those steps that we just covered again for the other side. So wrong sides together. So a three eighths inch seam allowance, uh, press it open, trim it back, fold it back to right sides together, uh, press it, sew it at a quarter of an inch, and then press it to the back. Those are, those are the steps listed out. So go do that for the other side of your garment, and I will too, and I'll meet you back here after that's done. All right, you guys, we have a tube with two openings, <laughs> which is the beginnings of our gorgeous little dress. I'm going to Go through now and trim off all of our extra thread. You should do the same. Um, but I'm curious to know what you guys think of French seams, especially those of you who have never done it before. Um, do you like it? Do you think the extra work is worth it? I think they really add a beautiful um, finish to a garment that just elevates it from anything that you would be buying in a store. I mean, sure, yes, you can buy garments that have French seams, but you're paying a lot of money for that. And I don't know about you, but I don't like spending a lot of money on ready to wear clothes that barely fit. Next week, we are going to be covering the neckline um, casing. No, no, the neckline drawstring. We are going to be adding the casing for the waist gathering if you are doing that um and that's it I think those two things are going to be next week it's the steps 16 through 24 yep and then we will only have two videos after that so we are rounding out to the finish line here very exciting um, anyways, I will see you all very soon. Thank you for watching. Hope you love your dresses so far. <laughs> Bye.